What is up, everyone? This is Mayan Gordon. I am bringing you another Live at Five guest today. We have Jason Kavnis, who is going to be sharing with us some incredibly valuable information related to human resources, related to veterans and the impact and power that they have, um, not only in your business, but in our larger communities. And go ahead, Jason, why don't you introduce yourself? But first, I want to make sure you guys comment if you're watching, where in the world are you watching from? And <clears throat> excuse me, what is one thing that you're grateful for today? I think if we can all get in a mindset of gratitude that we're all going to be a lot happier and we're going to absorb information a lot better because our minds are going to be hungry to grab at that information instead of in a state of any type of fear. The way you nix out fear, you guys, is with a bunch of gratitude. So go ahead, Jason. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to people and also let, let people know where are you located in the world? Yes, I'm with Jason Cadmus. And first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to actually be on this podcast. Thanks for your taste. Really appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. And, and so right now, I'm actually in downtown Seattle. We're working on 4th Avenue right now. And I just made a podcast over here. Like I said, my name is Jason Cadmus. I'm a retired U.S. Armor officer. I'm also the CEO, co-founder of, Co of Cabinets HR. We deliver HR to companies for four and a few people based on location in the industry across the United States. I also do my own podcast called The Jason Cabinets Experience, where I talk to small business owners, founders, and other interesting people like yourself. And on top of that, I'm also a CEO leader for Bunker Labs. So Bunker Labs, like, like veterans, does all these organizations help, help veterans find jobs or mental health. So there's really nothing out to help veterans start companies, right? So Bunker right. Labs, our mission is to help uh, military veterans, military spouses start companies and just help on the entrepreneur journey. That is super cool. So it sounds like you do, honestly, like a, a bunch of different things. Um, I'd love to hear kind of what is your main driving purpose? Um, obviously, you know, working with veterans is something very important to you. But, but what drives you to do all these different things? What's your main driving force? So my driver purpose, uh, a lot of small business owners don't have HR, right? Either because they can't afford, you know, like a person like me is like 80,000, 100,000, you know, they can't afford that. You have HR consultants who overcharge on price and deliver on value. Like most HR consultants, like they'll come to you and they'll say, hey, you you hire HR consultant. And they say, well, you need this, you need that. And you'll be like, well, I know that. When can you give me some, <laughs> when can you give right. some look at? Like, oh no, we just consult, you know, so that's, you know, and they, they charge right. they don't kind hour, of right? deliver or execute. They just tell you no. what you should do different. Totally. Like, I could have Googled that, right? Like right. I know I need an employee handbook, right? That's how I hired you, right? And then these large HR companies like ADP and Trinet, they're known for having horrible, horrible user experiences, right? And so we just want to like, take that, have, and be able to have small business owners not worry about HR. It is a main awesome. focus. Yeah. So I, I'd love to ask you then what for people who are watching who are not super familiar with HR, like definitely when I started at my first company, I didn't really even know what HR like I knew what it stood for, human resources, but like what is it? What does it mean? Um, go ahead and give your your kind of definition. I mean, it's, it. it's so expansive. And like, like when I try to get customers, they were like, well, we're not hiring no one. Like, no, it's more than recruiting, right? right. It's recruiting, benefits, culture, payroll. It's all these different things, right? And another thing uh, off topic too, like you have a lot of H, not even HR people here, like marketing people, social media people. You have these people say, I'm an expert. Like, are you really an expert? Right. Like, are, are you telling me you're like, you're an HR expert, but you've you done HR for four years. And, and to me, even if you've done HR for 20 years, we'll say at IBM, well, you might be an HR IBM expert, but are you really an HR right. expert, right? And I'm always like, yeah, that's why I'm not my pet people like, like always worry when someone says I'm a social media expert or a social media leader or right. HR, whatever the case may be, is like, are you really, right? Are you really? Yeah, so there's, there, it sounds like there's a ton of different, I would say, nuance <clears throat> to, to human resources and to HR. Um, how how does your company help people in terms that's very different? Because I, I I've talked to you previously. Um, one of the few actual guests that I've had a conversation <laughs> with before before the live show. Um, but I know that you're actually you're trying to do something or you are doing something that is in my mind a bit revolutionary. So again, to kind of give some context to people based on the conversation we've had previously, is that traditionally human resources is a very like involved thing where you have a company and you either have to pay a ton of money to have them do a bunch of different things um, or they're just really giving you some advice and doing almost nothing and and there's not much in between um, and kind of what what you're creating is something that allows them to deal with all the expansiveness of HR without spending nearly as much money and also not having another company as 
quite involved in the process. So could you talk to me about what that what that is, what that looks like? What is kind of the, I'll call it the revolution in human resources that you're trying to drive? Yes. Yeah, so like most HR consultants, HR people, they think HR has to be delivered to like high touch points, high interaction, high cost. And we will even be delivered to low touch points, to low interaction, low cost, right? Because like, we don't have to, you don't have to, like when you think about most HR people in your companies, they don't not do an HR eight, eight hours a day, right? Maybe two, three hours right. a day, right? So why pay someone a salary $80,000 a year for that, you know? And another thing too, off topic. So in HR, there's like, there's like what we call old HR, HR of old H, and no HR of no HR of yes HR of new. So old HR is like you ask the HR person, what's going on in marketing? I don't know. I don't work on marketing. This is my business, you know. Or you'd be like, hey, um, you might have this great idea that's going like increase profits, save money. HR person have nothing to do with it because it's actually work for them, right? Right. Or right. or you'd be like, um, hey, HR person, this employee needs to talk to you. They can't talk to you after, after five. Well, I get for a five. Like, I don't know what to tell you, right? Right. Old HR is like, you know, everything's black and white, everything's compliant, you know, or follow the rules. Gotcha. Yep. New HR, we're trying to be more like, you know, like, we know, you know, everything's going on in the company, marketing, sales, all that kind of stuff. If someone leaves, we can know they're about to leave. Uh, we believe in compliance, but those are always a way to get around it, right? Always a way to get to yes. Without, so it's you know, like, it's, it's much more flexible, it sounds like yeah. now, that it used to be something like really rigid where you were yes. given a structure and you tried to fit yourself into the structure and now you're kind of creating something where the the structure is your company and the, the hr is almost fitting into you more or less yes. and any, each cool. company is different right a lot of these hr companies think right. like there's like one size fit all right like most hr companies if you're a, a restaurant in seattle manufacturing in dallas or whatever in alabama it's the same template right where we you send you questions right. to answer and and the biggest difference between old and new HR, old HR, like suppose you have a, a, a person that works for you, work for you 10 years, by far your best employee, right? Like not even close, right? It's by far your best. But you have a rule in your company that says if someone misses three days without, without letting you know. Right, right. Then you, have, you have to fire them, right? right? Old HR is like three days, you're gone, right? New HR, right. like, okay, the rule says three days, but let's at least find out what's well, going on, right? Let's not fire our best employee yeah. that we have. At least let's yeah. find out what's going on, right? Yeah, and, so it's, and that's the big it's difference. Smarter. It, it sounds like it's taking into account many more factors than than used to be taken into account. Um, I'd love to get your opinion from your experience working in HR. What are in general? Obviously, again, obviously, there's so much variation. Every business is going to be different, especially every industry is going to be different. But what have been some of the biggest benefits? or um, positives you've seen from companies implementing, let's say, more HR into their company. And so just to give context to everyone watching, again, what that looks like is maybe writing more material for your employees that helps them, um, that helps give them more clarity on like what their job is, what the expectations are, not the rules, right? Because we're not talking about rules anymore. We're talking about expectations. We're talking about, um, you know, productivity. We're talking about results. Um, but it's creating more tools to assist those employees. It's also about, I would say, the communications, right? HR has a lot to do with what are the uh, communications within your company. So it, again, it touches on so many, so many different things, but it has to do with what is the interaction within your company that allows the interaction between your company and it's, it's customers to exist on the absolute best plane and space possible. Um, so what are those what are those things when you've seen a company who didn't have a lot of HR at all or someone who did have HR, but it wasn't well fitted, let's say, to their company, and then they switched and they added that? Um, what have been the benefits from that? So you bring up a good point. A lot of companies, they take care of the customers, but they don't take care of the employees, right? Right. And, the, and everyone says, you know, take care of employees, they're taking your customers, but whoever does that, right? Hardly anyone, right? So you got to do that. And, and so what, a basic thing is this, as simple as an employee handbook, right? A lot of people say employee handbooks is for rules, regulations, compliance. But in reality, your, your employee handbooks should be for your, your culture and your values, right? And your, yes. It should be, you should be read your handbook and know what your values are, right? So yeah. example, if you have an HR policy that says, you know, we support our employees going to parent teacher conferences, right? That's right. the culture for you, right? Yeah. And, or you're going to let you have free time for voting, right? You, you know that right. for a fact, you know. And, and, and for cultural fast, like, I believe there's no such thing as good or bad culture. It's a culture that fits your company, right? Right. For example, we're both in the Seattle area. Amazon, I've never worked at Amazon or Starbucks. I know a lot of people have, right? Amazon, right. you know, you better get the grind in. You better start doing some stuff within the first two or three days. 
Starbucks is like you better not do anything for thirty days. Are right? you collaborating? Right, you gotta watch and learn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. So if you go vice versa, you're gonna fail, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So just kind of summarize that for people watching. So HR, it's not just about let's say giving your employees instructions or guidelines. It's also helping them understand what the culture of the company is and helping them assimilate to that culture. Because it's almost like moving to a new city when you join a new company. Like you don't know any of the people really, you don't know any of the customs, you don't know any of the culture, right? And it's something you have to learn. Now, as a new employee, think about that from the new employee's perspective. How are they supposed to learn that? How are they actually going to learn that? Um, one way is always going to be through conversation, which is why, honestly, HR is such a big deal, even in written form when you have an employee you know, handbook. That helps, under, that helps everyone within the company understand the language that your company speaks. It helps them understand these are the types of words and phrases that we like to use. Um, so I think that's a really, really great point to bring up is that almost it sounds like what you're saying is that an employee handbook, instead of being something where it diminishes how an employee feels of like, here's what you can't do. Here are the rules. Don't do this. Watch out. Be scared. It's more something that empowers them and connects them to the company. Yes. It makes them feel a part of something larger exactly. and a part of something special. Um, so I'd love to know what are different ways that you've seen, like, let's say someone is watching this right now who has a business. Um, and they're interested to like they're they're listening to this and they're they're saying wow HR sounds kind of cool I'm I'm kind of interested in that um, what are some ways to start dipping your toe like maybe they they're, it's it's a big right it's a big connected thing so like how do you start learning more about HR how do you start implementing HR um, how do you get into that process when it's it seems like a really big, scary, overwhelming thing? Yeah. So most things HR is government related, right? So you can pretty much like go to watch the State Department of Labor, Equal Opportunity Community, the Society of Human Rights Management. Well, the challenge is for HR, usually everything changes in December and January. But there's like, you know, like here in the state of Washington, Seattle's different from Tacoma, different other different locations. So gotcha. it's just a challenge, right? But you gotta you gotta keep keep on top of it, you know. Um, and that's for like doing HR. A lot of keep companies miss the opportunity with new employees. So everyone knows you got to onboard people, right? Do I nines, all that kind of stuff, you know. But a lot of people don't do orientation, right? So perfect example. My first job at the army, I was a, a, a HR manager at a seafood plant in Alaska. When I first got there, people were like onboard, I nine, that's right, whatever, right? So I started orientation where I did like an hour brief, and I and I and I there's one picture on there where I said, hey, I would ask the question, what do you do here? And that oh, we kill fish, we cut fish or whatever. And that showed a picture of a family eating a fish dinner. I said, no, what you do lets this this family eat a nice fish dinner. You're doing right. this right, and they and then like that the, the RI just increased right. So you, and you, a lot of companies miss the opportunity yeah. to make, make employees a part of their family those first ninety days because the stats is I can't remember what it was, but within the first ninety days they're they're going to decide they're going to stay or go right. That makes a lot of sense, yeah, especially because if you guys. If, if everyone watching this thinks about it, like when you have a new job, really where your head is at is about the job aspect is like, I just got this good job. I'm making money. That's really important to me. So I have to do a good job to keep making that money. You're, you're not so much focused actually as much on the job itself because you're so new into the job that you're, you're thinking about having got the job. Um, keeping the job more than like, let's say what you've been at a job for right. Six months. You're not after six months. You're not thinking that way. You're not like, Oh my God, I hope I don't get fired today. I'm brand new. <laughs> um, and so it, it is important to help people right away from the get go. See, Hey, we hired you. Like you're here now. Here are the things that are really important for us to focus on. Here are the things that really matter to our company. And I would say a lot of it comes down to, I would say, core values. Um, and I'd love your opinion on this um, in terms of working with with businesses. And is one of the, the things that you guys go through with HR, understanding what a, a company's core values are and working on those. Yes. Yeah, so we do the employee handbook, HR policy, we send them 10 questions to answer, right? If they have to give a walk-up message, a close message, and they have to list their, their, their core values. And also on the, when you do the job description, we, we make them pick five characteristics that no matter what your position in the company is, whether it be gender, secretary, VP of finance, you have to have these five characteristics to be successful, right? So we do those kind cool. of things. That's awesome. 
Awesome. That's great. So I, I'd love to also ask you about, I know that you're a veteran and I'd love to talk a little bit about kind of your experience with that. So um, just, you know, give us some background. Like when did you get into the military? What, what was your experience in terms of like technically what your job was? Um, and then to kind of close that up, I know this is a lot of questions, so take a moment of time, <laughs> but um, what are some of the things that you really realized through through that experience that have helped you in HR and that you're applying to HR? So I, I did 25 years in the Army. I was enlisted for eight, officer of 17. I actually did HR and in the Army too. I have to stop and say thank you so much for your service. Um, I know that me and all of my followers really, really appreciate your, your service to this country and to each and every one of us individually. And I want to thank you for paying your taxes to pay my retirement. Absolutely. <laughs> I love paying taxes. No problem. Yeah, so I did HR in the Army for 17, about 25 years total. And like there's some difference between Army HR and, and like civilian HR. Like, for example, if you work, like, let's say you work at Microsoft for three years and you leave, do you get anything? Probably not, like maybe a dinner or whatever. In the right. Army, every time you leave a job, you get an award and every year you get an evaluation. Every time you get a boss, you get an evaluation, right? So, so for example, right. one time I was uh, in charge of HR of Afghanistan. We were in charge of a prison over there. Um, and we would have, we would have like 600 people, uh, active duty people moving every two months, every two months, had 600 people moving out in charge of 300,000 people doing HR and still in charge of HR in Fort Lewis, Fort Raleigh and Colorado. Right. Yeah. Wow. So it was like really extensive. Huge. Right. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, I mean, this is a lot different. I know about HR. People don't realize that, but HR, I think is the only business fucks that, that touches you every point of the way, right. From the beginning to the end. Right. Like, like, right. That makes how, sense. Yeah, yeah. how this, if you work for a, a IBM or Microsoft, how often do you deal with Microsoft sales, you know, unless you're in sales, right? right. But somehow HR is going to deal with, you know. Right, right. No, that makes sense. It's like, it's almost like a connective glue yes. in the company is like a cool way to think about what HR are does um, is that your company is a complex machine. It's almost like a car, right? And the yes. car's got an engine and the engine's made up of a bunch of parts. So like each system is like a department within your company. Um, and each department is made up of many, many parts that have to work together and they have to work together in a way where there's no friction. Um, and so it's almost like an oil or a glue or however you want to think about it. It's both something that holds things together and keeps them running seamlessly and running smoothly without giant issues. Or when there is a giant issue, it comes in and it helps assist and flow with the, the solution to whatever that problem is. Um, so I, I'd love to get more information on how how your passion for for HR and veterans has combined, and and what's that that's turned into for you? It's going kind of, it's turned into a lot of opportunities. You know, like for I'm with Bunker Labs, I see with their, with them opportunities hit from that. Just like different meeting people, I host events. You know, um, like I entered a, a um, through Bunker Labs, I entered a contest called Hofstra Veterans Venture Challenge in in Hofstra. Oh. I made, made the semifinals for that. Oh, awesome! Uh, Congratulations! That's yeah, dope. Thanks. That's dope. And then through Bunker Labs, there's a there's a thing called New York University Future Labs in Brooklyn, right? So it's a year long year long program. They don't take any equity. Free offer space, free housing for a year. Got accepted to that through Bunker Labs, you know. So it's just just a lot so of opportunities. Cool. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. So um, I'd love to ask you that. How did you find out about those opportunities in particular? I would say right now there's a huge disparity just in the world in every single category between opportunities that exist and like people actually knowing about those opportunities, like literally every space, this is true. So I'm curious, how did you find out about them? So I'll say this in background to me, I'm a INFJ, like only 1% of us are INFJ. We're like the introvert introvert. So like I'm an introvert gotcha. to the core, gotcha. right? But you gotta put yourself out there, right? Like I'll go to yep. meetup.com and Google, go to different meetings, you know, talk. I mean, you just gotta put yourself out there. You can't, you know, Oh, let me go on Google and search for a job and go home or see, right? I mean, you got your you got to be pissed off out there. I love that. So you're saying basically just putting yourself out there is the thing that allowed you to become more aware of more yeah. opportunities. And I'll say too, like suppose, suppose you want to find a job and we'll say marketing, right? Right. Well, don't go to marketing events. Go to software development events. Go to Chamber right? of Commerce yes. events. Yes, I call that value arbitrage. Yeah. And it's something, it's where you basically recognize what are you good at? Now go to the place where it's the legal, least likely that that type of person or that type of value would exist because that's where it's almost usually the, the most valuable. So for example, um, let's say you are a business where you make dog harnesses. You might think, okay, 
go to a dog marketplace. But really, if you think of what's something that dog owners also really, really like, um, uh, man, a better example would be skateboards. Let's skip examples. We're going to skateboards. So people, let's say you absolutely love skateboards and you have a skateboard product and it's a cool wheel that like makes your skateboard go faster or something. Instead of going to a platform or a forum or any type of group where there's a bunch of skateboarders, if you go to a place where there's Vans skateboarding shoes, where that's the thing is about the shoes. It's not about skateboard, it's about the shoes. And you start advertising and making connections and friends with people there, you are going to kill it because there's no other skateboarder or skateboard company advertising in the Vans group. And again, this is not the best example, um, but you guys get the idea. It's like if you take something that you're really, really good at and you go to a, a place where it's not the main focus, you all of a sudden become the really interesting, different, valuable thing at the party, at the event within the group. Um, is that kind of how you see it? Yes, I definitely see that. Yeah, awesome. but you definitely yeah. Have, you, 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 you have to put yourself out there, right? I mean, meet different people, and you know, be on LinkedIn. You know, just yeah. Yeah, I have to agree. You know, from from my personal experience, um, you know, so many of the new opportunities I've gotten, yes, have come from me posting on social media, but a lot of them have come from actual phone conversations or Zoom meetings I've had, where someone the meetings let let's say the meetings about TikTok. But through a conversation, I, I learned some piece of information that has nothing to do with TikTok that makes me aware of something I was completely unaware of before. Like maybe the person is, is, is a doctor and they tell me something that relates to my health that I didn't know about. Guess what? My life is better now because I yeah. get to implement this health thing and it is something I care about. It's something that applies to me. And almost every single person you could ever talk to has some piece of information that you don't know yet that does directly apply to you. And I think that getting yourself out there is a beautiful, wonderful way to attract that information, um, you know, make yourself more accessible to opportunities because opportunities are out there, but you have to go get them. You still have to, to make the effort. You have to put yourself out there. You have to make yourself available for them. Um, so let's talk a little bit quickly about the, I forget the name of it all right, tell me again, of the veteran kind of like, you know, Business oh, startup. Oh, oh, uh, business. Buckle, Buckle Labs. Bu is it Buckle Labs or Bucko? Bu Bunker. Bunker. Bunker Labs. Yes? Okay, yes, cool, yes. cool. Bunker Labs. Tell me tell me more about that. Is that something like what? what's your connection to that? Um, are you like a, a founder? Are you just a part of it? Um, and just tell us some more information. When did it get started? What does it do more specifically? Yeah, so it got started in 2016 out of Chicago. A guy named Todd Connor, a retired Navy officer, started. Just the reason I said before, you know, wants to help veterans and military right. spouses start jobs. So we're on like, I want to say 30 cities across the United States. The plan is to get into, into 50 states by 2024. And we got some pretty big name sponsors, like four corporations come sponsor us, Comcast sponsor us, uh, and some other big time companies sponsor us. And so, some pro programs we have one program called Launch Lab Online. It's like you, all you have is idea, right? Launch Lab Online teaches like you know, basically like, you know Google Analytics, SEO. You know, how do you pick a logo? How do you pick a name? Right? Those those kind of things. And Very after then after that, we have a thing called Veterans and Residents, because I'm the city leader for that here in Seattle. So Veterans and Residents is a partnership we have with WeWork. So WeWork provides ten military, basically ten military people, free space for six months in 25 cities, right? Oh, cool. Is that, and so is that a, I'm not super familiar with that, that business. Is it one of those, um, like, uh, space rental, like it's a, it's we a work, physical yeah. space. This is a co-working space, yeah. Co-working space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and one cool. thing different about us, like, I'm sure you know what tech stars and YC Combinator is, right? No, could you tell me? So tech stars and YC Combinator, they're basically like an accelerator for software, start software tech startups. So okay, cool. It's, it's the same thing. You go, you validate your product, do your MVP. And fundraise right over and over again right yeah. everyone's yeah. the same stage with us we take everyone right like we've right. had someone who just had an idea we've had a company who had, who had raised like eight million dollars in funding we had a marijuana app nonprofits, financial so we have all different kinds right and That's so really cool. so they get access to our network and we work network and like we work a lot of people don't know this but if you don't if you pay for we work like me i'm a we work i can go to any work in the world and use it right Dallas, cool. San Antonio, it a, Brazil. Like a monthly membership type of setup, or how does it work? Yeah, so we get it for free because because right, right, we right. work pays for it. Like it's, 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 it's month to month, yeah, it's a month to month, you know. And of course, you know, 
and they just have a lot of services. I know two, I'm in the 14, 11, 4th Avenue rework. Each rework is different, right? It's like the one on Holyoke. Totally. totally. The one on Holyoke is like based on small business. The one I'm in is like more of a startup building, right? Because we're in here. We work, we work Labs is in here. They're like a startup incubator and Flatiron School is in here too. That's cool. So it's almost, it's it's both um, the space, but some of the spaces also have like additional resources in terms of s- business and startup life, so to yes. speak. And what I try, I try to con- connect with resources. Like, you know, like I might tell them like, oh, another thing to a volunteer is we're only supposed to work five to 10 hours a week. Some do more, some oh, do like, less. Right, like, right. So someone might say, I'm going to have a conversation. So we do weekend huddles. I'll talk about Google Analytics. And someone doesn't know, I'll explain it to them, right? But I'm not right, going to go right. hook up the Google Analytics from, right? Right, right, right. Or like someone wants to meet some VCs, I'll, you know, like point in the right direction, but I'm not going to do introductions, right? So Right, yeah. right. Very cool, very cool. Um, Just quickly, if you know, with WeWork, is that something that, that's already nationwide? Um, yeah, it's nationwide. Okay, yeah, it's, nationwide cool. yeah. it's nationwide, yeah. It's nationwide, yeah. So if you guys are watching right now and you're, let's say you're looking for an office space or just a space to, to work out, um, I think, you know, What's the name for it? Communal, uh, communal spaces. That's not yeah, co-working the space. Co-working. Thank you. Yeah, co-working spaces. Um, it's something actually relatively new. I mean, I'm sure it's existed for quite a while, but it's something that's happening as a kind of larger movement all over the country. Where works? I'm just sure one of many, many. Um, yeah, they're, they're, I know that there's one here in Spokane. I don't remember the name of it. It's a it's a different name. Um, but it's a it's a big thing happening. It's a really great way as any any type of business to reduce your rental costs um, but still have access to a really great space so definitely look into it if if you haven't before even if it's not something you're a hundred percent interested in for yourself look into it it might be something great for you to recommend to any of your friends um, or or other people you know who are in business yeah and we were they were doing some kind of network events every day they have like happy oh, hours cool. there's a lot of stuff to do yeah and that's the people awesome. yeah. and the people who work there that's wonderful right like I'm gonna go shout out to Haley L Cell I mean Teresa I'm just the people at we work are just great that's awesome yeah you guys definitely support businesses that are made up of amazing people not that everyone in the in the planet isn't amazing because I believe that you guys all truly are but if you find a business that's really run and built off of supporting people like I, I believe that's a winning situation and something you definitely want to be a part of um, so look into co-working spaces within your city in addition to literally just the space itself that you get at typically a very reasonable price what Jason is bringing up I think is another amazing factor for people especially if you are an introvert having those set events and you're like I'm a member so like I feel more comfortable participating because if someone asks me and comes up and they're a stranger and I don't know what to say to them and I'm uncomfortable in that situation, I know that I can talk about that. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I do rent this co-working space. I rent it for this, right? That's such a great, easy lead into a full conversation with someone to be able to make a friendship, to be able to, you know, bring value, get value and start to kind of expand your network and your opportunities at the same time. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, To close this up, I'd say, is there anything you want to leave people with as um, just a, a point for them to keep in their mind that maybe, you know, something they haven't been thinking a lot about that you want them to think more about when it comes to human resources. And then also if people want to get in touch with you to find out more about anything that we've talked about, whether it's human resources in general, whether it's what you're doing very, you know, differently with your company or whether it has anything to do with veterans and how they might be able to get involved. Um, how would they get in contact with you and what's that kind of point you want to leave people with? So first I'm going to show an introvert trick I learned a few years ago, awesome. right? So like suppose there's a network event, it starts at seven o'clock, right? Mm-hmm. If I get there at seven or seven ten, it's like I'm off all leave. I'm not gonna talk to anyone, right? I, I'm right. not gonna do it, right? Because I see people in the little clicks, I'm not gonna go introduce myself, right? Right. So what I do if something starts at seven, I get there at six forty five and stand at the door. If people come in, I introduce myself, you know, hey, I'm Jason, right. you wanna go talk, right? So I do it like that. So that's my my introvert's chip tip, you know. And one thing that's kind of strange about me, like I don't like like this is bad to say, but like when I talk to someone, I mean, I really don't care how the weather weather is, all that kind of stuff, right? But having said that, I love to get in front of people and talking, right? Which is kind of yeah. like, you know, kind of like a, a, an oxymoron, so to speak. Uh, awesome. for, for social media, I'm, I'm like, one thing about me, you know, I, I think I do a pretty good job on social media, you know, definitely based on my age, right? Because one thing I'll say, you know, get out of your comfort zone, learn learn some new skills, right? Yes. Um, like, like, like uh, pretty much I'm Jason Kavnis or, or Kavnis HR on pretty much everything, except for Pinterest. Oh. I don't mess yeah. with Pinterest, but TikTok, you know, Instagram, Snapchat, LinkedIn, all that kind of stuff. I'm pretty much everywhere. 
Awesome. You guys definitely reach out. Um, I think Jason's an amazing resource. He is really, really skilled and talented in, in HR and understanding the, sh I would say the shifts that are happening in digital right now. Like HR is traditionally a very paper run type of thing. Um, and, and digital is something that Yes, it's been around for let's say 20 years, but it's it's very new in its implementation, I think, with HR. And Jason's definitely, I think, at the forefront and the head of that um, and doing some really exciting things. So be sure to hit him up. Thank you so much for joining me today and sharing all this valuable info. And as always, you guys can get in touch with me through same same things, Mayan Gordon um, on LinkedIn, on um, Instagram, if you search Mayan Gordon Media, as well as TikTok, I am World of Glass. You guys, be sure to hit me up. Be sure to hit up Jason. Have a fantastic rest of your night, and we will be back at it tomorrow. Thanks a lot for this. I really appreciate it. Of course.